Hey, what's up, it's a figure hunter, and today we're gonna to talk about heart rate accuracy when worn on the wrist for many different optical heart rate sensors and many different watches. So as I was finishing up my Whoop 4.0 wrist heart rate accuracy when wearing the device for CrossFit because it's obviously it's hot off the shelf. Many people still haven't gotten it and I wanted to get some immediate results out when wearing it on the wrist and doing CrossFit. So you can see that in that review in the description below. I've now transitioned to wearing it on the bicep and I am actually going to give you a sneak peek into my first CrossFit workout while wearing it on the bicep. It, some point in this video, I'm not gonna tell you when so that you have to watch. But many of the different subscribers have asked for what my heart rate accuracy findings have been with a multiple of, uh, of devices. As always, I test, you know, what's the average heart rate accuracy above 100 beats per minute? What's the amount percentage of accuracy in the zone five, which is 90 to 100% of max heart rate, and then zone four and five, so 80 to 100. So that's what these results are a culmination of. It's just percentage of weights to each of those accuracy percentages across a multiple of optical heart rate sensors when worn on the wrist. What we're going to find out is that you should always pair to a chest strap. So obviously some of these devices do not pair to chest straps, so we're gonna look at the results for them, and I'm gonna give you one big summary list of all the results as well. But the biggest thing when doing a CrossFit workout is the amount of wrist flex that occurs, the amount of strain that occurs across the wrist just makes it highly more a lot more challenging to find accuracy when wearing it on the wrist. And we'll see today some of the results of some of the devices that actually did okay when wearing it on the wrist, but we're gonna dive in. And the biggest thing I would say is just get a chest strap if you can pair that to the watch that you have. So with that, we're gonna dive in. We're gonna look at them in ranking order, just like an old school system. So A, B, C, D, F and then I'm gonna go F minus. And we're gonna work our way from the worst performing all the way to the best performing. These typically were six to eight workouts in a multitude, of, it wasn't the same workout every time. And so there's a lot of variables that aren't perfect. And I'm, I'm increasing my accuracy, especially for the WHOOP 4.0 testing when testing it on the bicep and also what I did in the description below for testing it on the wrist, just to make sure I use the DC analyzer. I can show the, uh, heart rate graphs overlaid over top of each other so that you can glean your own personal opinion about is it accurate enough for you and then I run it through the same calculation metrics and I have been analyzing different analytical ways to look at heart rate accuracy now that I'm doing more accuracy or analytics with regard to the WHOOP. So stay tuned for more when it comes to future heart rate accuracy tracking and maybe even backdating some of the tracking that I've done so far. So with that, we're gonna look at the worst performers first and work our way to the best and come back and talk talk about. All right, so here we have it, the F minus ranked, zero to 50% accuracy. And a lot of these, they were so poor in their accuracy reading, I didn't bother to go through six to eight different tests. I just sort of stopped at three or four. The Sunto seven, Chorus Vertex 2, that was one that I just sort of, it was just, it, it could not keep up with the intensity of a CrossFit workout at all. So it wasn't worthwhile to try to see if it was going to be 44% accurate or, you know, 48% accurate. It's just not accurate. Chorus Pace 2 and the Fossil Gen 5. Um, now we move on to the F ranked, 50 to 60% accuracy. The Polar Vantage V2, and this was when I first got it, so it was like right out of the box when it first introduced to the market. So algorithm probably wasn't as updated in the TickWatch Pro 3, and TickWatch Pro 3 doesn't connect natively to a chest strap, so you have to use uh, like Runtastic or you know some different app with the Wear OS. Then you have the D ranked, 60 to 70% accuracy, Samsung Galaxy Watch 3, and then there it is, the most recent accuracy testing, the Whoop 4.0 when worn on the wrist. What I found with that is I did seven tests and two of them just were, that just did not keep up. So five of them looked better. So you have to take that percentage, but even if you just looked at it in simple statistics, five out of seven right, two out of seven wrong, means you got a 71 on the test. So you're still close to this range. Then the C ranked, there's the top dog in the AMOLED device manufacturers that does not connect to a chest strap, the Amazfit GTR3. The WHOOP 3.0 did perform better when worn on the forearm at 75% accuracy. Obviously, all of their metrics follow from the intensity of the strain. So to miss 25% of the hardest parts of the workout, the highest level of heart rate and cardiovascular strain is not acceptable. The Garmin Elevate 3.0, again, you know, Garmin L8 3.0 did fine for running and simple stuff. And then Garmin connects with both Bluetooth and Ant Plus, so you can connect it with any device on the market. And the Polar Vantage M2 and Ignite 2, so you have 73% accurate. Now we'll get into better accuracy. 
and there's the WHOOP 3.0. So the best accuracy I could get out of the WHOOP across a number of tests and wearing on the bicep and doing CrossFit workouts. This is when I was testing it at WHOOP versus the Open. 3.0 device um, is 80% accurate. I still feel like that's a very low B. That's just not great and not worthwhile if you cannot, you don't have any other options. This is the best this device could possibly get because the bicep is the best you could possibly get. It doesn't connect to a chest strap. Then you have the A ranked. I threw in the Polar Verity Sense just so you know the accuracy when compared to a chest strap. It was highly, highly, highly accurate. So feel like it's totally trustworthy if you wanna use that in, if you don't like a chest strap. Then the Garmin Elevate 4.0 and the Apple Watch 6, both coming in at about 93% each. Um, they were not tested across the same types of workouts. So there's a little bit of uncertainty there with the validity or like the, you know, you have to take some of that into consideration because, you know, I have a job and this, there's only so much I can do. <laughs> but um, those are the accuracy. Those both performed incredibly well. I was really pleased to see Garmin step it up. And I, I, you could say about this Apple Watch 6, that's the Apple Watch 5, that's the Apple Watch 7. So their sensors have been accurate across the most recent lines and maybe even the Apple Watch uh, 4. And so now this is the major list. So you can take a screenshot, you can just look at this, um, you know, to be able to use it for future reference if you want to just look at all of them in summary, just sort of broken down by their percentage of accuracy, sort of banded amongst the typical um, grades in school. And then we have a sneak peek. And what we see here is the first workout with the WHOOP 4.0 when worn on the bicep. The first was, it was, a, it was like a, um, a power snatch with a hang power snatch with a one minute, 15 second break and then some overhead squats rotated between. And you can see it kept up with the highs and the lows and everything in between, even on the warm up, it basically tracked the flow of the workout. I don't, I feel like this is highly accurate. I don't think those little bumps is really any difference because it's gonna give you the same strain score as if you wore a chest strap. And then we look at the first Metcon from the WHOOP 4.0 when worn on the bicep. And boom, there it is. You can't tell which is the chest strap, which is the whoop results because they're overlaid and on top of each other. So this was not, you know, I mean, it wasn't fluctuating heart rate. This was just a 15 minute all out where you basically had 10 wall balls to start off every minute on the minute. And then you did max um, calories uh, on the assault bike afterwards. So it was just in full intensity all the time, but the whoop kept up. So we're obviously gonna have to check some high level variation in heart rate when doing a Metcon and future things. So with that, let's talk about what we see here in the results. And there you have it. I mean, I threw in the Polar Verity Sense, which is an armband, so it doesn't quite track, but it is using an optical heart rate sensor. And, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm testing now, the Power Labs armband, which goes on the forearm or on the bicep. was super excited about that, as well as testing the TicWatch uh, Pro 3 Ultra. Um, so I'll get the results in for all of those things. But as we can see, there's only a couple of manufacturers now that are getting higher level accuracy, like an A in accuracy. And that was the Garmin Venue 2, which is also the same sensor, the Elevate 4.0, which is found on the 945 LTE, and the Apple Watch 6. I think the same percentage accuracy could be assumed for the Apple Watch 5 and the Apple Watch 7, because it is a lot of the same technology. And I will say about the Apple Watch, even though in my testing it came up just a little bit shy of the Garmin Elevate 4.0, which is on the Venue 2 and the Garmin 945 LTE, I would say the Apple Watch series of watches, you know, five, six, seven, and I think the four might even actually have the same optical heart rate sensor are definitely the most accurate optical heart rate sensors on the market. I would say even more so than the Elevate 4.0 because as I've tested different things and even as I was testing Apple um, apps and the reviews that I've done recently with different Apple, Apple Watch applications that you can use for CrossFit, I would put the watch anywhere. I would put it high up the forearm, I would jerk it around, I would shove it over to the side so that I was testing the other devices and the other devices didn't get messed up when testing the optical heart rate accuracy. And it always kept up. It was really impressive. And so I would actually bump that up if I was gonna go with just my personal experience after 20 workouts versus just six to eight. So we can see those high rankings. The Whoop 3.0 on the bicep got a low B, so like an 80% accuracy. And to me, 
I think 85% and better is sort of a minimum standard if you're gonna really trust the analytics that flow through from the workout. So if you're gonna trust that the amount of heart rate accuracy is good enough to give you proper strain scores, or if you're using Garmin, give you proper training effect and training load if you're using Core, all those different devices, you wanna have 85% or better. And right now there's only two devices on the, on the market that actually do that with an optical heart rate. You can obviously see a bunch of failures, I, you know, the Garmin, I mean, the Polar series of watches, the Vantage V2, the Vantage M2, the Vantage Ignite 2, the Grit X Pro, they all, they, you know, the, they use two different light sensor um, mechanisms. And I would say that, you know, they're still, even though the Polar Vantage V2 was a low score, it was when I first tested it. So, you know, you have to take that into consideration. The algorithm would have gotten better. I still would probably say they're in the 60 to 70% accuracy range even with the best that they've gotten as much as they developed. Then you have all the others. Anything that doesn't connect to a chest strap, ironically, is horrific. So manufacturers just have not paid attention to heart rate accuracy when doing anything but just sort of steady state running or indoor biking. Because any of the watches that don't connect to a chest, the Suunto 7, the Huawei GT2, you know, the Fossil Gen 5 doesn't really, unless you use a third party app, you know, they don't connect to a chest strap. The only one that was worthwhile in the AMOLED field that didn't connect to a chest strap is the Macefit GTR3. As I obviously posted, it's just barely under 80%, and it was keeping up with the flow of the workout, so that made it worthwhile. And obviously, we can see the first results for the Whoop 4.0 when worn on the bicep, and I am impressed. I'm super excited to get the testing and more and more testing done and even look at other, other ways to look at the analytical percentage of accuracy with the Whoop 4.0 when worn on the bicep. So with that, that's the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.